Welcome back to our channel. I've got something really cool for you today. James Webb's new engineering image has just smashed an astronomical record without trying, as it reveals hundreds of distant galaxies and the deepest ever glimpse into the infrared universe. The image released by NASA on Wednesday was captured by Webb's Fine Guided Sensor, or FGS, over an eight-day period in May and encompasses 72 snapshots taken during 32 hours of exposure time. Notably, the FGS, which was built by the Canadian Space Agency, is not a science instrument and instead keeps the observatory pointing properly at its target. Still, the stunning image provides a taste of what's to come when the most powerful and expensive space observatory ever built finally commences its ambitious science work in earnest. FGS took the false color image during a roll test, according to a NASA statement about the image. While Webb's near-infrared camera focused on a star dubbed HD 147980, the telescope rolled from side to side like an aircraft. During the test, the FGS kept the telescope pointed at its target. The resulting image, a byproduct of the support work, reveals the cosmos in a color scale from white to red, with whiter shades representing objects emitting the brightest infrared light and redder hues revealing dimmer objects. Nearly every object in this mosaic of overlapping images is a galaxy. The background is filled with thousands of them, and many are so distant and so old that the sensor's operators didn't expect it to be able to capture their extremely faint light. The bright objects with dark centers and six long pointy spikes are stars in the Milky Way galaxy, with two MASS 162357988 plus 2826079 blazing at the right hand edge of the image. But every other spot of light to the image is a galaxy. It is, according to the Canadian Space Agency in a recent statement, for now the deepest image of the infrared sky. Jane Rigby, Webb's operations scientist at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, also pointed out in the statement that the faintest blobs in this image are exactly the types of faint galaxies that Webb will study in its first year of science operations. The image is not perfect, as it shows signs of the so-called dithering effect, which leaves black dots at the centers of the imaged stars. Dithering happens when the telescope slightly adjusts its position between exposures, which results in saturation of its detectors. FGS's primary purpose is not to take scientific images, NASA said in the statement, and most of its photos will be discarded shortly after acquisition. The instrument's task is to enable accurate measurements by other instruments by helping the telescope to precisely point at the stars and galaxies the scientists are interested in. Still, the images hint at the groundbreaking discoveries that are to come from the observatory. When this image was taken, I was thrilled to clearly see all the detailed structure in these faint galaxies. Neil Rowlands, an FGS program scientist at Honeywell Aerospace, which built the instrument, said in the statement. Since FGS was not designed primarily to do science, it doesn't use color filters like the other science instruments, which means scientists can accurately determine the age of the galaxies in this image, the statement said. Although the image may be the deepest of the infrared universe ever seen by the public, its glory won't last long, as according to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, the July 12th release is set to contain the deepest image of the universe ever captured. Like Pam Melroy, NASA's deputy administrator said during a press conference ahead of the image release, What I have seen just moves me, as a scientist, as an engineer, and as a human being. Three of the four science instruments on NASA's James Webb Space Telescope have completed their commissioning activities and are ready for science. Each of Webb's instruments has multiple modes of operation, which need to be tested, calibrated, and ultimately verified before they can begin to conduct science. Interestingly enough, the latest instrument to complete this process, the Near Infrared Spectrograph, or Near Spec, has four key modes the team officially confirmed as ready to go. We made it. Near Spec is ready for science. This is an amazing moment, the result of the hard work of so many JWST and NearSpec people and teams over more than two decades. I am just so proud of everyone, said Pierre Ferroui, web project scientist with ESA, or European Space Agency, and principal investigator for NearSpec. Now is time for science, and I am eager to see the first scientific results coming from NearSpec observations. I have no doubt they will be fantastic. Big thank to all who made this possible across the years. Great job.
The final mode verified for near spec was the multi object spectroscopy mode, a key capability that allows Webb to capture spectra, or rainbows of infrared light, from hundreds of different cosmic targets at once. In multi object spectroscopy mode, near spec can individually open and close about 250,000 small shutters, all just the width of a human hair, to view some portions of the sky while blocking others. By controlling this micro shutter array, Webb can observe multiple specific targets while reducing interference from others. The confirmation of NearSpec's multi-object spectroscopy mode marks the first time this capability has been verified for use from space. It'll allow NearSpec to characterize everything from the faintest objects in the universe to the formation of galaxies and star clusters. NearSpec was built for ESA by a consortium of European companies led by Airbus Defense and Space, with NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center providing its detector and micro-shutter subsystems. Out of 17 total instrument modes across Webb's four instruments, only one mode remains to be verified, for the near-infrared camera, NearCam. When the team confirms this remaining mode, the months-long process of preparing Webb for science will formally be complete. Soon, JWST will enter its first year of science observations, otherwise known as Cycle 1 Science, which is jam-packed with plans to target exoplanets, galaxies, exotic stars, and more. Those working with JWST's instruments will move into a support role for the astronomers who have time with the observatory in the first year. Those scientists will inevitably have questions about how to use this powerful new observatory or how to interpret their results. And the instrument teams at NASA and the Space Telescope Science Institute will need to be on hand to provide answers. According to Scott Fridman, the lead commissioning scientist for the James Webb Space Telescope at the Space Telescope Science Institute said, The observatory will be used in ways that we haven't completely experienced yet, so we'll be watching that carefully. While the work still isn't done, it's a bittersweet time for the people working on the team. The daily commissioning briefings are coming to an end, and many of those who put in long hours to tee up JWST for its first year of science are winding down. That isn't necessarily a bad thing for some. For me personally, I just want to sit back and now enjoy it, says Lee Feinberg, the optical telescope element manager for JWST who's been working on JWST's development in some form for the last 20 years. You know, let the scientists have their day and do great things. I'm just looking forward to looking at the images with the rest of the planet and enjoying discovering the universe. And what a humble way to end off on today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.